Hello everyone, welcome to Stitchy's World. My name is Caitlin and today I'm bringing you a Dollar Tree book haul. I never thought this would happen. I went to Dollar Tree uh, about a week ago after I had just been there a few days prior and they had all brand new books. So of course I bought them all. Was there any other option? And I ended up picking up nine brand new books and I've done something very strange. I've never done this before, but I wanted to be able to tell you a little bit about each book. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start my own book club, but I'm the only member and I'm reading nine books at once, chapter by chapter. I did read the first three chapters of each one of these books, chapter one, chapter one, chapter one, chapter one, etc. Anyway, let's dive into the books. So the first one, and these are in no particular order, is called The Era of Ignition by Amber Tamblyn. She is a producer, actor, author, poet, Golden Globe winner, Independent Spirit Award winner. Um, she was in The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants and on House. Um, there's the picture of her if you're thinking that her name sounds familiar. This book is actually a memoir of her experience writing her critically acclaimed film called Paint It Black. I have not seen Paint It Black um, and I really didn't know too much about Amber Tamblyn, but I'm enjoying her book so far. I didn't realize it was a memoir when I first picked it up. I wanted to tell you this is definitely a feminist book. She talks about how she has struggled to make her movie a reality and how producer after producer that she went to, who happened to be men, all of them, they were unwilling to give her movie a chance because it didn't put men in the kind of narrative that they were used to being in. So far, it hasn't really felt empowering to read because it's really just reading about all of her struggles, um, but I'm only uh, chapter four. I know that the movie gets made and it wins awards, so I'm sure it'll be a happy ending, so to speak. The next book I have is most likely by Sarah Watson, and she's the creator of The Bold Type. I feel like lately I've had a trend of picking up books written by authors who are also um, TV show writers and producers. So I never saw The Bold Type either, um, but I was really interested in this book because it's about four girls in high school, best friends. But at the very beginning of the book, you find out that one of these four women has become the president of the United States. You don't know which one. So far, I really, I'm really enjoying it, and I have absolutely no idea who it is going to, who's it going to end up being the president. This book is called Scared Little Rabbits. It's written by A. V. Geiger. This one's interesting. There's this girl Eleanor who goes by Nora, who enters into a summer program for like programming. And they're preparing for this big event called the Maker Fair. And when she arrives, she realizes that she really doesn't fit in with the other girls. But she bumps into this guy named Maddox. And he's wearing these glasses that she later finds out are insta-love glasses. They're part of a project that some of these kids are working on. And it's an app that they're developing called InstaLove that is supposed to hopefully be picked up by an app developer and become a real thing that's going to bring them lots of money. But of course, it's not just a meet cute because there's another Eleanor who is actually Maddox's girlfriend and they break up right in the beginning of the book. That's, I'm not giving anything away, but they have to kind of play it like they didn't break up for some reason. And we don't know what that reason is. All we know is that it's gonna get messy. It's gonna get messy. I really like this book. It's kind of cute the way it's written. Sometimes they put pieces of code as part of the narrative. This one is called Undone by Kat Clark. I'm gonna compare it to two books, 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher and P.S. I Love You by Cecilia Ahern. So basically, Jem is best friends with Kai, and um, Kai reveals that he's gay when he's pretty young, like maybe 10 years old, and she, uh, Jemima is immediately crushed because she really wanted to marry him. She just, she loves him with her whole heart. Really, they're soulmates, but Kai dies by suicide. So Jemima is left behind and is really, really struggling when she receives a package from Kai's sister, Polly. And Polly 
drops this off and Polly has never really been close with Jem. She wasn't super supportive of her brother being gay. So Jem never really warmed up to Polly. But in any case, Jem gets this package of envelopes and letters from Kai and it tells her to open each one on the date that it says on the envelope. So she opens her first one. I want to say it's not like 13 Reasons Why because if you've read that book, the letters that are left behind each reason are like reasons that things were going wrong in the main character's life and reasons why they made the decision to end their life. Where this, the mood isn't that kind of like dark. I am enjoying this book. It's Undone by Cat Clark. Okay, for the next one, I don't know if you've seen the movie Wonder Woman 84. I have not. I've not seen any of the Wonder Wom Women Wonder Woman movies. This is a junior novelization, so it's written for kids, and I'm actually really enjoying it. I heard the movie was bad, but I'm actually really enjoying this book. Um, so Diana, Wonder Woman, it starts out with her at the Amazon game. So then flash forward to 1984, she's in Washington DC fighting crime. She just like zooms in and out of a crime scene like she saves the day but because of that lifestyle she's kind of like a loner well she meets this woman barbara who's working at i think it's the natural history museum i got might have gotten that wrong and they strike up a friendship and barbara's so glad to have diana as a friend because barbara is kind of the outcast at work she's a big nerd she works in the gemology department of the museum but they strike up a friendship and diana starts revealing more about her life than she ever intended to I don't know what's gonna happen, but it's pretty cute. Hi, Moira! You wanna say hi? She's gonna scream. She always yells. Hi, baby. <laughs> that was a silent scream, but right. my next then book is a classic. Down. It's called Rebecca. It's written by Daphne du Maurier. This is the media tie-in cover for the Netflix film, which I have not seen. I've not seen any film of Rebecca, and I've never read it before. The first two chapters are very descriptive of Mandersley, this, this manor on the Cornish coast of England. It's just very dry. It's a lot of description, nothing happens. What I do know about Rebecca is that basically there was a woman, Rebecca, who was just like this legend at this place, Mandersley, and she dies. So our main character is coming along after that and like kind of, I don't know what kind of book it's gonna be, honestly, if it's gonna be kind of a mystery. It says it's a romantic suspense. That's really all I know about it. I. The next book I picked up is called Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. She also wrote the book Emergency Contact, a YA novel. This is her second YA novel as far as I know. And it's about this uh, college student who has kind of dropped out of school. He's behind on all of his payments. He's behind on his rent. He's he's basically broke. He's working at a bodega and he does the overnight shift when this woman, Deanna Smart, comes in and he doesn't recognize her at first and he has this like witty banter and he keeps saying all of these things and telling himself, shut up, shut up, shut up, but he's just, just saying stuff and embarrassing himself, but they actually kind of hit it off and then he recognizes her and she is a former child Disney star who's now like a pop star of mega fame. So that's where I got to in the book. Anyway, it seems like it's going to be really cute. It's very... This next one is called Every Bone a Prayer by Ashley Bloom. The main character, her name is Misty, and she has kind of this special ability. It's not... This doesn't seem like a magical world, but she does have this ability to commune with nature. Primarily, she talks to the crawdads. Um, she goes, this takes place in the Appalachian Mountains. She goes down to the stream and she says her name and the crawdads will respond to her. But she's going through a very rough time in her childhood. Her dad just left the family and her mom's very upset right now. This is a lot more literary fiction, I wanna say. There's a lot of imagery, but I'm really enjoying it. Last but not least is Wondersmith. The, the series is called Wondersmith. This one is called The Calling of Morrigan Crow. It's written by Jessica Townsend, and it's the sequel to Nevermore. And I know this happens a lot with Dollar Tree books. You end up getting the sequel before you ever see the prequel, uh, before you ever see book one, and you may never see book one come through. I went into this knowing it was book two, but I was still curious about it. 
and I'm so glad I did. I would love to read book one. It's checked out at my library right now. I would say this is a great read-alike to Harry Potter. I'm not the biggest Harry Potter fan. I just haven't really read more than book one. I wanted to tell you though, if you have someone in your life who loves Harry Potter, recommend this series to them. Morrigan Crow is a wondersmith, meaning she collects wonder, which is some kind of magical energy, and she's been inducted into this society. She is an outcast. Her peers don't accept her, and she almost doesn't accept herself in a way because she doesn't know what her power is yet. All of the other magical be people uh, recognize her power but she doesn't know what it is yet so she almost doesn't believe in herself and feels that she's an imposter so anyway I hope you enjoyed this haul there was so many books um, and I don't know what I was thinking reading one chapter of each one of them up to now some of them I'm in chapter five I can't tell you which one I'm in love with the most because I'm such a mood reader it really depends on like how I'm feeling at any given moment what book I want to pick up anyway um, that's all thank you for joining me I hope you stick around for more bookish content I love doing Dollar Tree book hauls and I hope to see you next time bye Woo!